And if I want to make an extra bonus stream, I'll just do it. I'll just do it. You can't stop me. I'm not the boss of me. No one is the boss of me. Um, yeah. That's what I say. That's my story. Sticking to it. And, um, yeah. I'm just going to continue to... I was going to work. And I said, you know, it's kind of silly if the stream is really about game development, not to stream the game development. So, here we are. I'm sure you'll understand uh, some of this is going to be messy and boring, but not the music. Music will not be boring, I guarantee. I guarantee. I guarantee. Just give me a sec to set up said music. And there we go. Rolling. Yep. And with the music playing on stream, of course, if you're watching the VOD, I'm sorry, you're just going to listen to me mumble. But with the music playing, I'm just going to code now. Thank you. Oh, that's interesting. Yes. Why would they not be consistent? That's weird. Okay, this is where I was, and this is... Mm -mm. Yeah. Before I dig deep into the code, I'm just going to make sure it is actually working. Sounds like it. Good. Um. Okay. I'm going to be working on and testing things related to um, this mechanic, or you can expect the card, where this mechanic that lifts the card, this mechanic that places the card, and that's fine. This is all what we've had before, but what we haven't had before is the ability then to go back and reclaim, take these back, or reposition them. Um, so that's what I'm going to work on. So I'm going to be testing.
part of what I've already done is refactor um, an old mechanic that never imagined us going back and reclaiming the cards, which of course I did early on, just wanting to get things done. But now I'm in the space where I want to reclaim the card and I can't ignore it anymore, so I needed to redo it while not changing the functionality. So the functionality is still there. This is the script I'm working on. These are the data I'm working on. Cards played is an index. It's literally 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. It's the cards that are in your hand reflected as a number here. Negative 1 meaning it hasn't been placed yet. These are going to represent the cards that are placed on the table. This is an array of actual cards. It is copying the card here. So when I do this, I've picked zero, and it knows it's zero. It knows it's the flash rabbit. And if I drag it off, like I'm not placing it on the table, but I'm inspecting it, then it knows to go from zero to negative one on this first spot. So this first spot, that's the issue that I've been dealing with because this represents a formation cursor. That's this one. There's three of them on this round. So one, two, three, it is the first one. They all relate. It's the formation cursor that is the only thing that is really aware of where on the table it is in terms of which lane and the attack position. Um, so it's important. I do use this formation cursor for exactly that purpose. And it makes some sense. It's a cursor. It's meant to hold my selection for the position and the lane. That said, uh, it's become an issue because I can place one card over here and then place a different card over here. They have no relation to lane or position or anything. They're just floating in space. And yet, they occupy the first two slots, the first two formation cursors. In other words, while I can find the card that I'm clicking on here, literally because I click and the mouse is going to be closest to this one, the first one, which relates to this index number and this card. Um, that's messy as well. How do I say this? Um, I can click and drag off of it. And what I've done now, you can see the inspect card value is turned to negative one while I'm holding the mouse button down. It has, um, oh, I don't have it at all. Hmm. Did I not save? Did not save. <laughs> well, that would be why. But the point is, um, that's where I'm working on right now because here I am. I'm literally saying, okay, so um, you're not inspecting a card, and there's no card that's in any amount of lift at all, but you're clicking. You're holding the mouse button down. So we want to know, are you, like, clicking on the table somewhere? And if so, is there a formation cursor that is close? Because if that's true, then it's this formation cursor that we want to know, right? That tells us which card in hand, it tells us which card to be played. That's, that's what's going on. So I'm reclaiming it by saying, cool, yeah, that's actually the, that's the inspect card now. Spect card progress should be putting that card all the way over to the right. Its lift card progress should be one. 
Oh, but you can ignore this because this is part of the problem that I'm dealing with. Sometimes I'm clicking and it thinks that I'm selecting an index of nothing, which is incorrect. But um, it should be inspected with a lift card progress of one and all of that because I want to treat it exactly the same way as I do when I'm inspecting. If I've clicked on this card, huh. it's not doing it. Did I not save again? What's going on? Save. Okay. Jeez Louise. Did that like seven times. Yeah, let's try this again. So, yes, it's on the table now. Now I'm going to click on it, and when I do, I kind of want to look at this inspect card. I want it to be zero. I want this to turn negative one. I want this to be blank. Click. It's allowing me to drag it, which is a, it's something that we haven't had yet. So that's progress, I think. And I can put it back. That's good. How much further do I need to go here? Uh, I can take the second one and place it. This is still normal. But I, I don't want it to do that. That's next. I'm going to make it so it ships, um, ships around. But I can place it. And if I grab it again... Ah, uh, here we go. So that... First one looked fine. Hold up. What just happened? That first one worked fine. Uh, what? <laughs> if it's going to, yeah, if it's going to cause a problem, please be inconsistent. Okay, so that, there's actually a consistency there. I picked card zero before. So now that I'm clicking on it and holding it down, it just moved card zero over there. Uh, yeah. Look at this. Card zero is lifting up and stuff. So um, one of the things that is not working is related to a saved position and rotation. The rotation is actually correct. It's fanned out and angled a little bit but it's supposed to do this. So the saved rotation gets it to go between these two spots. It lost the saved position. Oops. Yeah, and all of these are like losing it. They've all lost it, sort of. So I'm clicking on these as I'm dragging over them. So all three have really been removed from play. So um, how do I say this? As far as the data goes, this is doing what it should do. <laughs> uh, user interface is fun. I, I literally have spent more time coding the user interface on this view than I have with the battle view. Absolutely. And that's not unusual. That's That's very common. Very common. All right, well, data-wise, this works. Good to know. Um, these cards are absolute garbage. They are in the wrong spot. And I did pick these first three. And they are the ones that are in the weird spot. <sighs> really weird spot. Is this... I mean, it is the inspect card position. And the rotation is actually correct for when it should be in the hand. Given that I'm not clicking on it right now, that actually makes some sense. But the position is not 
there. And I think I know what's going on now. So this is all hooking into uh, this inspect card progress. Let's just use our handy find feature to dip around to where the code uses. Lift card progress. As long as we are inspecting a card. And this is something I just removed uh, because it looked absolutely wrong. I know I was fixing a problem here, but it uh, while I was refactoring, I removed this because this looked wrong. So, But I kept a note there for me to keep an eye on. This literally says, if there is no inspect card and you are clicking on, click on a particular card with 100% lift progress, then make that the inspect card. That's fine. This other stuff that was there had to do with it was it was really confusing, frankly, um, and it was conflicting with what I wanted to do, so I took it out and left a note there. Okay. When we lift, we are just peeking the card out from the fanned hand of cards. This. That's lift. 0%, 100%. So every card can do that. When I click on it, that goes from 0% to 100% of inspect. So there's an inspect progress. And the reason why it knows to go from here to here is because of a saved card position. And likewise, when it comes from here back to there, it is because it not only has a position saved for the inspect card position, but it has a saved card position for each card. I believe that position is still there. It is still saved. But I believe what's happening is I'm just not executing this line of code because the conditions say do not do so. And you can see I, me trying out to use exactly that line here. <laughs> I commented it out because it was actually problematic. In other words, there's a case to revise the conditions and I need to review why. So I'm going to continue to ignore this for now, but here I am reviewing the conditions. First of all, I am in on GUI, which is to say after the frame is rendered, render stuff on top, which is not exactly what I'm doing. I'm just using this, uh, I'm using this kind of like update, kind of like every frame, uh, check this code. Now I'm using this for Allowing cards to be known as placed on the table, and if they are not, then I look for their potential to be lifted and inspected. This is me dragging over the bottom here. That's what this part of the code is meant to do. Um, I'm not actually clicking the button yet. I'm just looking through all the cards, and as I do drag over the space where that card is, I might lift it. So lift card progress goes up. Otherwise, lift card progress goes down. If this saved card position has not been set yet, then set it. Hmm. I should not be doing that here. 
because this can be reset in a bad place? That's a good question. How often does this happen? This should just happen once. By printing this line at this place, this condition, I'm hoping to only see that once per card. But if it's more than once, then I know I'm going to have another problem. That looks very suspicious to me. I should really only be doing that once. And I probably should not be doing it here every single frame. I mean, I'm not doing it every frame, but I shouldn't be checking to do it every frame either. Uh, console. Okay, so it's when it has not been set yet. And I'm setting it now. Oh, but it set it again. So, I mean, that's a problem, right? I should really only be setting those once. Mm. Why would I need to set that more than once? This is a global variable, which I'm just going to wince when they hear me say that. But um, this is a variable that is set... Yeah, see, this really should not be reset over and over again. That's probably where my problem is. Because it needs to use this saved, uh, sorry. It needs to use this saved card position location stuff um, when it goes between lift and not lift is there any other time I save it let's see Go search for that setting it to zero when lift progress is done Well, that's a funny thing. Why would you do that? Yeah, so hold on. <laughs> I do set it to zero, but like why? I've got one for each of the cards. Why would I keep resetting it if I have it once? Like, why am I doing this? This is done when lift progress is all the way down to zero, which is to say, go between the maximum and the minimum of lift or the maximum lift or minimum of inspect. This is just all for lift, but I'm also looking at it for lift. Sorry, lift and inspect. Yeah, see, I use it for inspect as well. Why in the world would I not just keep this data? Why am I zeroing that out? Uh, I, I think I probably thought that was really important at the time, so I'm going to trust my old self. <laughs> this should only be setting once now. I want to confirm that before I move forward. Good. So it's set all five of them and never again. Even when I do the inspect. Okay, good. Ooh, I think I just fixed something. Hold on, though. I'm not, not satisfied with that. I do need to have this data here. 
and this is important. Um, why I was thinking I needed to reset it is a really good question. I mean, while this round is happening, I never want to reset that and find it again. So I use this clearly for the case where the player is looking at their cards and I need the card to lift up and go down. I use it for when the player needs to click on it and inspect the card and release and get the card to go back. So all of that has been working, but for some reason I've also been just resetting a saved card position that is saving the position here in the hand when it's all the way down. And I don't know why. Like I really don't understand why that would be. Um, I can't figure out why I would want to do that. Um, I'm going to leave that here, comment it out, to remind me to keep an eye on it and try to figure out why. Same thing, why I comment this here, to just keep my eye on it. But with that in place now, see, this uses that for sure. And I'm already doing the rotation, but I was not doing the position. This is a little strange, but what's going on is this is me taking an inspect card and now dragging it onto the play field. As long as there aren't cards already on the play field, I can drag it onto the play field. And actually, I'm going to need to revise this, I'm sure. This indicates that all the play slots have been filled. You're ready to play, but if you want to change your mind, I kind of want that to, to also happen, so I'm going to have to review this later. So here you are placing a card on the table. Um, it is going to position the card on the table. This is doing that to the card that was in hand, the same card that was being lifted or inspected. So in other words, this was here for that reason. It was here originally to go between the inspect card position or not. If you are placing it on the table, it does not do this, which makes some sense because if you drag it off, it goes to the inspect position. Okay, but like either way, you are going to do the interpolation to the rotation it needs to be. It seems so weird. At some point, these were together. I remembered that. That's why I put this back here. But I commented it out because I have since moved it to here, which makes sense for previous mechanics that we had in place. Now that we fixed this and kept that data around, this seems to know where to put this. Okay, let's review because I know I'm stepping closer and closer to feature complete and I need to review where we are in the features. So step one, we can lift. Step two, we can inspect. 
Step three, we can take a card and place it or drag it off and let it go back. That has always been there. So if I drag it and leave it, that has been there as well. So it knows, this is the script that knows which card I'm inspecting right now. You can see the index of the card here. This is one, this is three, this is four. So, so far this is correct. If I click and drag this, it took card zero. No, it took card one. I don't do that. What? Stop. This is card zero. Um, part of me dragging over this spot where the cards lift up, the, the cursor comes over this spot and it's meant to lift the card or put it back. So part of what is sort of kind of working, <laughs> even though it's a bug, is when I click on it and I've got the wrong card over here, but if I hover over it, it comes back. That's because of this mechanic of me hovering in this area to lift and release the card. That mechanic is reclaiming the card, which is of course not supposed to be what's happening, but really there's a whole lot that's not supposed to be happening. When I click on this card, I should be clicking on um, angle deflectors, which is here. It is absolutely there, 100%. And instead, it's selecting the wrong index. This is the right formation cursor. This is the right card. So for this formation cursor should be looking at this particular card called angle deflectors, which is on the table. It is card index one based on the data player two's hand angle deflectors is one. This is zero, one, two, three, four. So this is true. Why then, this is still working, it's just this that is not. So I should be able to find exactly in the code where this condition is. I am in this space on the table, and I'm clicking. Hold on. Clicking in different spaces just to make sure. Okay. So um, if I click here on the, actually if I click over here on the table, yeah, okay. this is outside the range. If I get close enough, yeah. I got close enough and it grabbed the wrong card. So weird, man. Interesting. It grabs the wrong one over and over. So when I click and drag, I can get it to come back. That is interesting. So I should be able to find exactly this spot in the code. I'm just trying to keep my keep in my head exactly these conditions because now I can trace through this code. So it was click. That's what this is. And I'm looking through each card here. So let's just say at some point I was clicking on the card that I understood to have 100% ah lift progress i think that i think i just figured out what the problem is cuz this condition 
requires the lift progress to be 100%. And I think I reset that once I place it. Do I? This other time when I am not clicking the card and I am not inside that space, that should be late making this. And this is no longer the inspect card. Ah. Uh, yeah, I am going through each card and lowering its lift progress. Okay. Yes, I am automatically lowering the lift progress on a card because I'm not clicking and I'm not in the uh, hitbox area at the bottom of the screen where I should be lifting the card. So lift progress is meant to go down when I'm not in this hitbox area. As long as I'm not clicking either, because if I'm clicking, it stays up. It's interesting, it seems to like go up. And I think that's because... <laughs> wow, yeah, this lift progress is always going down. Just realizing that now, but that is going to cause a problem in this series of conditions that need to be true to make this work. So, this says I'm not clicking on it, but I am um, detecting lift progress is 100% on this card. And I am not in that area. Sorry. Not clicking. Uh, Oh, is it placed on the table? Wait a second, it should be skipping over this card then. That's what this does. This here looks through all the cards that have been placed on the table and sees, is this one of those cards? If so, it just says, skip it, please. That's what this is. So all of this down here should not be done as long as it's already on the table, which includes reducing the lift progress. So here I am looking at code and I, th I think I understand what's happening. Now I need to confirm that that's true. So when cards lower, it will tell me which card just lowered all the way. I'll keep all this up. When the lift progress goes all the way down, it tells me which card did that. So I should know then, if I take this card and put it on the table, it should tell me if the lift progress went all the way back down. Ah, there it is. It just went all the way down. That's why. So interesting. And somehow that's related to the fact that it's going to grab card zero. So weird. Inspect card is one. I can, I'm looking at it right over here. Ugh. It's so 
Weird. So how is this card getting taken out of the hand and putting in an inspect position? I'm on the trail. I'm on the trail of it. If I clear all of this. So that works fine. I think primarily because I'm grabbing card zero. <laughs> Just a terrible fake out. Because it is really not working, it's just an accident. That is what it does. Card zero is Mirror Wolf. And somehow that got taken all the way... Hold up. That got taken all the way to the inspect position. Actually, that makes some sense. So good to know. I, I had a feeling that's what was going on. This is definitely resetting the lift progress on cards as I click on them, even though they're already on the table. So this really isn't doing what I think it should be doing. Oh, technically it's not on the table because I just clicked on it. Oh, right. Okay. Here I am, reclaiming a card, and I've Detected the card and all that stuff, and right here. Sorry, cards played negative one. I have now reclaimed it. It's no longer on the table. That is true. Okay. Well, I mean, what's progress is this is happening right on the code that I am working on now. I call that progress because that is where I should be finding all my errors. <laughs> my errors should not be happening on code I already worked on. It should be on the thing I'm working on now. That is much better. I would much rather have that. And that mirrors how we work. Uh, we test as we go, and when we have a problem, we know exactly where it is. It's on the place we're working on. So Cards Played has negative ones in all the slots. As I grab a card, Inspect Card turns into that index. It is the index of Player 2's hand. And now as I do this, the cards are actually played. It's only when I take them off that it turns into negative one. Ah, I'm doing this wrong. I am doing this wrong. I shouldn't be doing this. Because it is actually on the table still. Hold on, let me inspect this again. I'm performing the act of putting the card on the table, which was working fine, and I am reclaiming it, and I literally want to back out of that operation in the exact opposite order that I place it. So here's me with inspect card at negative one and all the slots at negative one. I grab card four, inspect card turns into four, but all the cards played are negative one because I have not yet dragged it onto the table. Now I'm on the table and as soon as I do that, that first slot turns into four while inspect, uh, inspect card is also still four. And only when I let go. Now inspect card is negative one because I've let go. So as I click on it, I don't want to turn cards played into negative one yet. I just want to make this four. That's what's up. 
So I want to back out of this exactly in the opposite order that I got into it. So inspect card is that, yes. Inspect card progress. I need to really double check and make sure that is supposed to be 100% while I'm doing this. Well, I mean, yeah. It goes up within a second and is there, yes. Uh, lift card progress. As long as cards played is not negative one. Yeah, yeah. This this was already a problem and I couldn't figure out why. Now I know why. Because it I shouldn't be doing this at all. Uh, cards in hand. Please lerp from the saved card position, which we already fixed, to the inspect card position. Hold on. No. Why am I doing that? No, 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 no. I'm not going to the inspect card position. What am I doing? No. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Nope. This is what I do while I'm inspecting the cards. This is uh, here. Not even here when I'm placing it on the table. This is me reclaiming it from the table. No, I'm not going directly to the inspect. No, I'm not. And I'm not doing this either, actually. This says put the formation cursor uh, back behind the camera. Basically make it disappear. Uh, this gets rid of the card. I don't want to do any of that. I do that up here. Yeah. All of this I do up there. I want to keep that in that place. Do all okay. This is it's making so much more sense now. Um, okay, I'm. I I remember that this was important. I'm kind of ignoring it for now, and this is necessary. Okay, 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 okay. So I'm just keeping an eye on the things that I have commented out. That's for later. This I'm keeping an eye on. I'm keeping an eye on. This is why refactoring code is difficult. You literally have to be holding several things in your hand at the same time. Okay. I need to see the data. I want to see it reverse order exactly the way I place it. So here is the inspect guard is going to say four. This is going to stay negative one until I put it on the table. There we go. So now it's on the table, and I could drag it off the table. It goes back to negative one, and I can let go, and it goes to... So this is the order I want it to perform now. As I come back and click, I have let go. Now I'm going to come back and click on it. Inspect card is now four. And I can just put it back. I can drag it around even, which is nice. I wasn't able to do that before. Ooh, what what happened? I probably grabbed a negative one out of this and tried to get, yep. It was attempting to grab card at index negative one, which is out of range, doesn't exist. This will cause an error every single time. So let's slow down and reproduce that and try to find the condition that I can detect before I get to that problem. Oh, right. You see how I'm not clicking on the card? I'm actually clicking on... Huh. I'm nowhere near these other ones. These other ones are literally behind the camera. These other cursors. Uh, what? Okay, well, at least I know exactly where this is. This is me checking the distance 
Oh, the X position distance. <laughs> yeah, that's not good enough. <laughs> that is not good enough. Let's, uh, let's do this again. Okay, this makes a ton of sense now. What was happening is I was uh, clicking in the center, and although the formation cursors are well out of the way, they are behind the camera, the X position was right there. So, of course, I was clicking on it. I suppose I could move it way out of the way, but you know what? This is just... When I refactor the whole thing, I've already identified the fact that the formation cursors are sort of the key to the whole thing. They will hold the card index related to the hand of the player. They will hold the position in the formation, both the lane and the attack uh, order. And they will also hold information about um, the user interface stuff that I'm dealing with right now. Um, like I'm trying to click effectively on the cursor. That's what's going on. So let's do this again. Uh, this is literally uh, this is literally a distance function. Yeah, this is vector three distance. And I want it to be, I think, less than that, but I'm not really sure yet. Um, there's two things I want. Gosh, John, do I need to get this to? I do. Whatever. So again, when I refactor, this is <laughs> so one of the things I'm going to be like, what am I doing? Um, the position is going to be that plus negative two five half and we're talking about position as we are okay you know what let me let me just make a vector I'm trying to keep this clean too late This is so messy. It's just ridiculous. This is what happens when you uh, make prototypes, especially rapid prototyping. You are trying to minimize the amount of time taken to answer the question you need. And the question we're answering here with this is uh, a deep set of questions about the rules of the game. I literally need all these mechanics to work while I test variations on the rules. I mean, it's so maddening. This is a way of working that I do not normally do because of the time it takes. And this is a lot of time. Okay, so I think this is good. I do wonder about this distance. Because I sort of round it and everything, it might actually be fine. It's a good question, though. Might need to make it more or less. I don't know. Well, let's uh, try to fix that problem and move on. Again, I'm keeping several things in my head at once. Okay. 
I need to see the data. We want this to turn into 4. We want that to turn into 4, and then this turn into 4 when I drag it on. Okay, I've let go. Now, this turned into negative 1 because I let go, but I'm going to click on it again. And it turns into 4, which means I can drag it around again. I can even inspect it and let go again. Good. <laughs> One step at a time. Um, so now what I'm looking for is... Um, what happens when I place cards on the table? It's, it's, it makes sense that all this works, but now what happens when I click? I have selected it. I can see the inspect card value equaling the card value that I have. Okay. And as I click off, as I drag it off, it goes back to the inspect card position. That card... Oh, shoot. I can see a problem in the data already. You see it? Two of the three are empty. And that's that's incorrect. In other words, I can't grab that one. It thought this one was already returned, but it was not. It was left on the table. So I can take the last one off cleanly. I can take the last card off cleanly, this Fire Wasp, this last index. If I try to take the second one, see how the cursor of the last one disappeared? And in fact, you can see the last index turned into negative one. The last card blanked out. So it did not grab that card. It grabbed the last card, no matter what. Interesting. Even though it knows which card it is, the inspect card index is correct. Interesting. This inspect card index turns into three because I clicked this one. But it's the one that's not three is the one that got cleared. That's why it's doing that. Right, we are getting closer and closer to eliminating all the issues. That's a weird one, though. It takes out more than one. So now all three have been... Uh, see, that's weird. So I have, um, I think, uh, confirmed the um, little change that I just made. This is necessary and works fine, it seems. Good. <laughs> works better. It's good. I needed to do this, but whatever. Uh, getting rid of this, I think, is necessary and good. Um, I'm about ready to delete that. I have a feeling this is now the issue. I have a new routine that is literally meant to go through and find the empty index that is next to use. And that replaced a really dumb way of doing it before. This is part of the refactor I've already done offline. Now with that, I assumed that I could do this, which looks through and eliminates, I believe, 
eliminates uh, cards played that are no longer being used. But I have a very strong feeling um, Let's see what happens when I don't have this in place. Um, it was there to solve a problem. Let me see what that problem was. Let me actually cause the problem and see what it is. Because it's managing this array here. When it's meant to uh, make it so that it doesn't matter which order the formation cursors come in or which order these are used in. Technically, these are not the formation cursors, they're just arrays, but it happens to be the same index. So I'm just calling it that. So with this now, if I take one, it knows which formation cursor it is. Uh, It didn't put that formation cursor back. I wonder why. Oh, it thinks there are two with the same. Index and that's not correct. <laughs> Watch me cheat just to get this to work so I can see it working. Literally me going and changing the data while it's running. So, I mean, yeah, if I'm careful, <laughs> I can get it to work. That's not, that's not good code. Uh, robust code does not need to be delicately handled. That's incorrect. Should be doing it. So here's me taking out the middle card and you can see the middle card played and card indexed. These things have been zeroed out while inspect card is three and I should be able to let go and it goes back in place. Cool. That's actually correct. And now when I take a new card and drag it onto the table, it should fill in that middle one. And it does. So, uh, what's the problem? I'm, try I'm trying to figure out where am I still having a problem? I'm very carefully inspecting this data as I manipulate this. And I'm trying to see where the problem is. It's meant to do this. It's meant to clear it out, but then it knows to go back and use this one because it's open. It's got the negative one on it. So that is proper. And if that is proper, then what are we talking about? Uh, what, what am I missing here? Wait, why does it still say three? Why does it still say three? Hold on, I went fast and I... Ugh, this is why I want to go slow and careful. So there was a very important condition that happened and I wasn't paying attention. I was going too fast and I missed it. So now I need to go back and do this again to find... Play with it until I see the condition. Being very careful and looking at where it's clearing it out. Oh, see, it still says one. Why? Why? It shouldn't. Flash monkey's not on the board. It's because why? Why? 
what happened here? Why is this thinking it should be there? It's not. Uh, okay, 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 okay. I took out some code or commented it out because I wanted to condense it's it doesn't it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. I'm gonna leave it in there just in case I realize why it needs to be there, but I think it doesn't right now. In this case, I think I saw this not turning to negative one. And if it isn't reset to negative one, that's a problem. Oh, 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 this condition is terrible. This says, as long as there is a valid space to place the next card. Well, why is that a condition to reset these things? I think I just found the problem, or at least the latest problem. Let me, let me try to make this happen again, because if I can predict it, then I can detect it. Okay. Just sanity check. This all looks good. Now I do this. Card three goes on the table. Card one goes on the table. Card four goes on the table. I'm going to click on card one. Can drag it. Can inspect it. Can let it go. Can grab card four. And drag it off. Oh, there it goes. This should really be negative one. It really should. And this should be empty. <laughs> um, I'm doing this manually because uh, that's wrong. So here's card zero, here's card one. And I just fixed it, right? So is it because I dragged it off? That's odd. Why would that be a problem? Is it because I'm actually close to the formation cursor that happens to be on this side? Oh, I think that's it. Let me place some cards over here. My cursor happens to be close to this formation cursor, like my mouse cursor. This causes the error? No. Yeah. See, I'm seeing it turn to negative one, which it needs to do before it goes away. Oh, wait a minute, that last one did not. Hold up, hold up, hold up. I'm looking for a pattern. I think I just found a pattern. Place three cards, take off three cards, and watch the last one not work. Whoa. Well, this is definitely not working.
So I really can grab this over and over because it is going to fill this first slot. If I tell it, no, 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 you are wrong. That first slot has is empty, but the second slot is also empty. Now I have effectively fixed it. Is that true? Like so. Oh, look at that. I see. It is able to detect on every frame which is the first slot that is available. And when I do this and take away like the first one, now when I move any of these, they will effectively shift straight into this first slot as well and won't be cleared away here. So, there it is. So I just found the problem. And now I think I do need this section. This is meant to look at that list of cards played and try to find uh, a negative one so that what it's trying to do is make sure that as cards are placed here, uh, we have, if there's cards on the table, they fill the first slots and the available slot is always going to be last if there is one. And so when that's not the case, it's a problem. So this is meant to handle trailing cards. In other words, there's an empty slot in cards played, and it comes up before cards that are actually on the table. Okay, so fix this. I'm already looking at every card, or I'm looking at every formation cursor, which is the same index. And um, I'm looking at cards played. Hmm. Uh, continue if this is, okay, so I'm going through each of these indexes. If it's less than this, yeah, this is weird. I'm dealing with two different arrays, but they are dealing with the same index. And I'm looking at different data on these arrays, even though um, they're different. It's the index that I care about. Go through each formation cursor. Oh, shoot. I'm only doing this when it's in distance. Oh, dude. I wonder if this is wrong. It's absolutely wrong. Stop. Stop. That's not right. <sighs> Go through each of the formation cursors. Clicking the mouse. We have clicked on a card on the table while we are not currently dragging one around. In clicking on it, we have found one that we are clicking on. This is going to allow us to reclaim it as the inspect card. 
Yes. As I do that, I'm about to have another frame where I re-evaluate what's the first index of cards played that is free and open. And so before I get to that next frame, I want to fix the array. Yeah, I'm not doing this yet. Hold up. I do want to do this, but maybe not here. So this is saying, um, hold up. Yeah. Okay. Okay, click, drag, drag off, unclick. So if I've placed a card on the table, it now knows this is the next open slot because it goes down this list like that. If I fill these slots and then I try to take one away, like an early one. It is inspecting four. It is. It has already turned cards played to negative one because I did this. The moment I do that, it knows to take the cursor, formation cursor, and put it behind the camera. It knows to free up that slot. And so if I dragged it back onto the table, that's where it would go. Likewise, if I click on this one and do anything, the very next frame, it's going to put it right here because that's the first open slot, which is incorrect. I do not want it to do that. I want it to know. Wait. I want to fix the data. I want to fix the data immediately so there is no need to do anything else. I don't want to add new mechanics. I just want to fix the data because the problem is really about this procedure going through and finding the next available one versus understanding you've already got one on the table can be fixed if I just fix the data. If I take this off and now that I've let go of it, if that is the time when I fix the data and basically say three, two, negative one, and basically that. Now, when I click on this and drag it on, it's just fine. So I want to do this procedure, as long as it's correct. I want to do it right when I set this to negative one, and that happens here. Um, that is literally what I'm doing. I'm defragmenting the array. That's exactly what I'm doing. Yes, handling trailing cards. Yep, 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 yep. Let's just grab all this. This, If it's wrong, I need to fix it, but I know I'm not doing it here. That is not right. I'm doing it here. This is where, when I need to do it. Hello. Why are you in a weird spot? Come here, you. Why are you doing that? 
Visual Studio, you are so not helping right now. Jeez. I think it's trying to be helpful, but wow, it's just really not. Okay. Let's figure this out. This is go through. Oof, wait a minute. <laughs> Stop. I'm referring to variables that are in other places, and I need to make sure it's the same thing. Go through all the cards in the hand. Yeah, that's not what this is anymore. No, I, I really need to just defragment this array. So, forget this. <laughs> like, no. Um, what else? Go through all the cards played, because now, now that I've done this, I have made it a dirty array, and I need to defragment it. So go through each one. I think what I need to say is keep track of when you've found um, a place that needs to be condensed, because this is, there's only one. And if this is at the end, it's totally fine. In fact, I know exactly where it is. Interesting. I know exactly where this is. All right. If the problem is I have an array, let's say it's like, you know, it's got uh, three integers in it, and one integer is like a three, and the other one's a zero, and the other one's like a two. And now I've come in and I've made this negative one. Uh, I know exactly where that happened. That happened right here. So I should be able to say, go through the index after that. That could be four or five of them in total. Um, if there is more afterwards, um, make it equal to that and actually switch places with it. Okay, I know exactly where to start. So I don't need to start at zero, I can start at next played. Yep. Cool. So I am now saying I mean, and if this, if we are at the end, then it's not going to do anything. But start there now, and um, if we are not too far from the end, is this the same thing? If n is less than the length. If n plus 1 is less than the length minus 1, yes, that's the same. That's the same. I just don't want to have a bad error when I do try to do that. Length is 3. This is two and that's fine. Is three less than two? Actually, I want to say less than or equal to. Yeah, actually, 
uh, that, that was a key missing thing. I did not do that correctly. Less than or equal to. Necessary. I was missing one every time. It's a good thing I'm looking through this. If that's true, then take um, assign that next value to this. Okay. Um, I do need to switch that. What is this? This is wrong. I'm trailing, I'm going through all of them. So if I had like five, um, And this was like four, this was like zero, this was like two, this was like one, this was like three. Okay, and then I remove one like here. I want this to be able to, first of all, skip this one, but then uh, look here. As long as it's less than the max. And make this equal to that. That's what this line does. Let's see, where'd my negative one go? This is also doing that. This is also resetting things, yes. Uh, then what? See, that, that's wrong. If I'm going to continue to go up through these, I should just be switching them. Which is effectively this. <sighs> Until the end. But I also don't want to do it if this is already negative one. Like if this is already negative one, I don't need to do this, right? I should stop here. So um, let me do this again. So it's like this. And I'm going to reset this one. And I want to condense this, defragment it. I really just want to switch these. As long as... We're starting at next plate, and so I'm really looking at the next one. And if the next one is how do I say this? It's a valid index, the next one is, that's what this is saying, but I also need it to be a value that is more than the reset value. Because if it's not, then I don't care, but I do care if it's this. So I need this to also be there. So check that it's valid. If not, it's going to skip it. But if it is, cool. Then make sure it is actually also one that otherwise skip it. I'm really starting to think this is totally unnecessary. Almost. I need to put that value in there. So in other words, um, this was changed from a zero to a negative one, and it's looking ahead now at this two. And so this is all satisfied. It's doing this now. It's going to turn this into that. But what it needs to do is now change this into a negative one, 
which is effectively this. Because not only was this valid, it's okay to do that, but it was necessary to do it because it actually had a value that we needed. And then continue to do that all the way through and do something as long as we're not at the end, because it, we don't care if it's here. And the number up there beyond it is meaningful. I think this is correct. All of that led to a guess, a hypothesis that that is correct. Having looked at it very carefully, what we expect to see, now let me think about how I re reproduce this error. I'm looking to make one of the early values here negative one. So I need to stop. Okay. Now I'm going to go in and make this first one a negative one. This should now cause that routine that we just looked at to shift three and two down and put negative one at the end. Let's see. That's true. Oh, it did. Look, look, it did, it did, it did. And it put this blank one at the end and made this negative one. And so if I do this again, it knows that that is true. So if I take this and shift it off, it knows to do this. Okay, so we are going to implement shiftables later when I try to shift this around and push these other cards out of the way. But this is a little bit exactly like that, actually, but in data form because we're shifting these down to make the open space at the end. <sighs> okay, this is looking much better now. Uh, all of this interface stuff takes longer because it needs to be incredibly robust. That is to say, uh, players are going to bash at it and do crazy stuff. So there's a lot of testing involved. And it needs to be able to handle a lot of crazy, weird conditions, like players changing their mind at, you know, at any time, grabbing any card and doing anything. The, the system needs to be able to handle every one of those conditions. And um, I think we got it. Jeez, that took way too long. So what do we got? Well, we have the ability to reclaim the cards and reformat uh, reform our formation. I think I can cause an error if I try to grab these and they're in the same place. I mean, I'm grabbing one. I mean, they shouldn't be in the same place anyway, but, um, how does that happen? Oh, huh. is that because I was dragging over them? I don't know. But it is properly placing any card that has been played near the head of these arrays, which is exactly what I want. Now the rest of the system is operating on data that was already clean, never dirty. Because any time it is dirty, we clean it up immediately. Excuse me. <clears throat> so it's better. There's still a um, many problems we need to fix, but that's better. I wanted to be able to have the player be able to play with their formation. 
yeah, I can actually see it um, having problems grabbing the right cursor. This is partly because um, they I'm allowing them to get on top of each other like this, and that's never supposed to happen. I'm going to fix that. Um, but this looks great, actually. This is way better. I can actually reclaim these. I have to drag it over to the right to make them... I guess I could drag it down too. Or drag it off. Just drag it off. It's actually that's much cleaner and much much more robust than it was before. Yeah. So I'm now now I'm bashing at it. Now I'm trying to find an issue. Because uh, I'm hoping not to find one. Okay. But if I do find one. I, that's a good thing because then I can focus on it. If I ignore problems, they will be found by the player. <laughs> and that way, bugs are gold. Bugs are great. Uh, because that means you know what to focus on and how to fix it. Or at least you know what to focus on. Okay, this is looking pretty robust. I can really bash at this, and I haven't found a problem yet. Not a big one, anyway. Cool. Um, that is a big step in the right direction. Um, this bonus stream was really just meant to... Um, well, I really just wanted to listen to music while I was programming. And thought, why not go ahead and just turn on streaming? This now is approaching the end of the development of the mechanics for this view. This particular view needed so many mechanics to work properly because we want it to just kind of feel easy to work with. <laughs> uh, that always translates into a heck of a lot more work on the implementation side always does it always does uh, i i'm going to continue to bash on this and try to find things that could be improved but at the moment this is looking pretty good The last thing to work on in this view is something I put off for a little while. Not really put off, but I really needed to get to this place in order to get it to work. It is meant to handle the thing we were just talking about. I grab this card now. It's great that I can move it around. I can return it to my deck. That's awesome. I can change it for another card. That's great. Actually, yeah, that's, that's the thing too. If I have all the cards placed, and I want to place a new one, I, I literally can't because there's no open slot. I need to grab a card off first to do this. I might think about that. That might be related to what I was about to say, which is the last thing that needs to happen here is shifting of cards around. As I drag one from one lane to another, if I do this, I want this this other card to shift over. So if I do this, I want this card to come back here. So as I drag this one around, in a different lane where there's already a card, the other card should shift over. Now, if there is no other card over here, right, if it's like this, and I shift this 
over. I would like this card to actually just move over like this. That's shifting it over. But if there's no room at all, I want it to actually switch places. So that a card can only occupy an empty lane. And because you are controlling this card as you drag it around, the other cards have to accommodate. They shift around. This shiftables system has already been developed. There is a mechanic for this. Uh, there are just code for this already. And um, Yeah, shifting, shifting has already been worked out on this tool. This was weeks ago. Um, and it's going to be translating um, what we have here in the lanes, effectively what we're doing with the formation cursors. Now need to pay attention to how the shiftable system works so that it can shift all of the cursors around appropriately. Getting shiftables to work in this so that no card can be in the same attack position and no card can be in the same lane. At that point, when you have the ability to select your cards, inspect your cards, place your cards, adjust your formation, and then shift around all the other cards in the formation too, that's a about the completion, that's about all I need to do with this interface. Um, the rest is going to be, uh, there is some final work to be done here in this view as well, but that's later. I will get the shiftables working first, because then I can really put the whole user interface thing behind me, which is, <laughs> I'd like to get done with that. The last thing to do with the battle, though, had to do with these custom formations. Once the custom formations were working, and literally I'm tidying up the user interface so I can... Now, so I did the user interface to get formations working, but I finished up user formation, uh, uh, user interface stuff, to get back here and now use that formation appropriately. While we go forward, that's great. The battle is going to be engaged and cards meet each other in battle at different times. That's great. But that one issue that I've talked about multiple times where one card could attack another card all the way across another lane should never happen. Instead, as some cards get defeated um, and maybe two cards get defeated in that whole lane, that lane should then collapse. And all of these cards should shift over towards and towards. So instead of four lanes, there's three. It's at that time that um, instead of attacking all the way across a lane, now you're just attacking a neighboring lane. And that's okay. This should be allowed. Hyperdrive should be able to attack the card in this lane just fine. Um, as long as the cards are turned over. It should be able to attack Ballistic Lion, just fine. That's fine. It's one lane away. That's no big deal. But it's these two cards now. Like, now that this is still an open lane, I want this to collapse. That would allow Cougar Gun to pick between these two lanes to attack in. It could also be attacked by Rail Boots or whatever this other card is. The Urshan Bomb. But this... Attacking across a lane, I don't really want to have happen. Uh, it doesn't look right. And when there's five cards, it really doesn't, it, it doesn't make sense. Instead, it, uh, I mean, it actually takes away from the meaning of the formation itself. The fact that there are five cards is meaningful now. Uh, not just that there's that many cards to battle, but that the formation is this wide. And that's part of what I want in this, the tactics of making this formation in the first place. Oof. Yeah, so I need to back the camera up, it looks like. 
yeah, I need to back the camera up. This is off the screen, basically. Um, when there's this many cards now, that rule about not being able to attack across a lane really matters. Effectively, any time now there's cards that are turned up, they're fair game, which is just not reasonable. I only want the proximity cards to be um, able to engage. This is a subtle thing. Not really. It's, it's actually really important. Look, I mean, look how crazy that appears. It appears wild that this card can attack that one in the middle, like all the way across the battlefield. It just doesn't make sense. And it makes the formation much less meaningful. If, however, um, the cards that are in proximity are the only ones that battle, then this becomes a complex skirmish that the player has some control in, in so far as the formation they originally set. It's, it's a little hard to explain, but we are talking about a deep level of tactics that we want the player to be engaged in. And it's a sense that it is going to make, um, it's going to make for better gameplay if these cards act like actual soldiers on a battlefield with the proximity of melee combat mattering for, um, for how they, how they operate, how the battle plays out. So in that way, there's two big things to work on this shifting of cards around as you try to get it in a different attack order or a different lane. I mean, I'm manually making sure they're in different lanes and attack orders. And then the other thing is related to that, because it will detect an empty lane and collapse them, shifting the cards in the process. and disallowing a card from targeting another card that is more than one lane away. Like, the neighboring lane is fine, two lanes away is not okay. So that's those are two big rules that we want to implement. And they're not trivial. Uh, they're, they're pretty deep mechanics. It's going to take a little while, but they are very important, I believe. At that stage, I think, unless I'm missing something big, there's lots of little uh, potential rule changes that we could also try. But at that point, I believe we have all of the rule changes in place that we want to try. There's several of them. I think there's like eight or ten uh, different rule changes based on this uh, foundation of a card game. And um, imagine being able to find the best combination of all of those rules such that we have the best playable game we can. And at that mo moment, we lock down all of the mechanics or, you know, um, set those mechanics in place and ready to be tuned and refined just a little bit but major rule changes set and then we can actually make it look pretty instead of this garbage we could make it sound pretty we could put menu on the thing we can put all kinds of like there's stuff to do but the mechanics would already be in place, and we wouldn't have to worry about that. In fact, we would be pretty darn sure that we found the best combination of rules. And I didn't set my marching. They did least defense. I did most defense. Oof. And they won, because they targeted the ones with least defense so they could take us out. Yeah. Getting the card advantage early really matters in each skirmish. Okay, let's let's get let's get serious about this. I'm gonna go for the ones with least health, so I get the card advantage. 
And I would love to use speed cards. Thank you. Especially good ones. Oh, yeah. Give me. And I'll do it early. Early meaning ahead in the formation. Uh, yeah. Ooh. Somehow those are garbage cards. Okay, I'm good. I'll take that one. Um, okay, Twin Ogres is going to be around for a long time because it got a lot of health. Cougar Gun is going to do damage. These two speed cards are going to go first. Tactical Squid has a lot of defense. Not much health, but well, I think this, this is what we got. And I kind of mirrored the formation. I guess that was kind of on purpose. So my speed card got to go first, and I'm targeting the ones with least health. So when more cards join the battle, this is me cheating because I'm going to attack across tacked across the uh, battlefield to do that. I would not be able to do that in the rule change that we're talking about. But, um, and that's where the formation matters. You see, this would be a crazy formation that would isolate two different skirmishes in the same battle. And you wouldn't be able to do that. But I'm taking advantage of the fact that rule is not in place yet. Okay, so now I have a card advantage and I'm hoping this will work out. One of the rule changes that we might do is, for example, allowing marching orders to be adjusted mid-battle. Um, another rule change is, you know, do we even have this step-by-step -step button in place? Like, I, I'm manually doing this so I can very carefully observe how the systems are working. And I might keep this in place for a while. But maybe this is totally unnecessary. I mean, it's definitely stopping the play. I mean on purpose for for my purposes but the player doesn't want that it's a, it's another question should we have it should we not have it you know i had tactics going on All right cool um i'm done i'm yapping at this point uh we got a major refactor done i did some of it offline because i knew it was going to be major and not fun to watch but then we ended up doing some bit here anyway Yes, the C-sharp code. This is the Unity game engine and the C-sharp code. Um, I'm glad I figured that out. Though. Okay, I definitely don't need this here, though. That's true. I'm going to clean this up now. These things that I was keeping an eye on, well, I kept an eye on it. Now I know. I don't need them. If I needed to come back and... Um, reinsert them and rediscover them and redevelop them, I, I think I'd be okay with that. Why? Because I'm pretty sure I've already reduced the problem space. I don't have that issue anymore, and I think I'm done. In other words, I'm not going to look back until I refactor. So now I'm like very seriously cleaning up. Why? Because I don't want all this garbage in my face while I'm trying to... Um, read my own code. Having less garbage to look at visually helps. Like I'm almost tempted to get rid of that. Yes, be able to place cards even though all the slots are full. Yes, we have placed all the cards and I'm grabbing a new one and I can't do anything with it. It's by design right now. But uh, I want to review that. I want to revise that. Uh, this, yeah, this is no longer necessary at all. This, I think I did something in the middle of making a previous mechanic work. In developing a previous mechanic, I thought I needed to do something there. And I don't know. I'm going to blame a lack of coffee. Okay, so um, this, 
I have no idea why I would need to ever reset this. This is necessary for each card in a very specific way that it's fanned out in the player's hand. And that happens once per round. And it's a convenient way to grab it when I click on it. And I shouldn't ever reset it. Because that causes me to reset its location, which causes problems. So I think that was good. This is working good. I'm glad I did that and refactored all that. Ah, so much nicer to have clean code. Yes. This is it. I'll tell you that. What do you have? This is hidden. It's hidden behind the camera. I mean, it's not actually turned off. But I don't need to turn it off. It's just behind the camera. When I refactor it, if I want to just turn it on and off, that's fine. Okay, so this is all... <laughs> I have a feeling this is not used. Is that true? It is not used. What is it here for then? Uh, okay. Uh, if I comment this out, does something break? I'll look here for any red. I see no red. This isn't used at all. Table forward center. Am I just recording a location so I know where to look? There are these notes. <laughs> yeah, I think they're just notes. Actually, I'm going to just keep it like that. This is garbage. Don't do that. I hate Visual Studio when it inserts namespaces I don't want. All right. Wow. I am glad. So getting the code uh, implemented is good. Cleaned up is even better. Now when I need to develop the next thing, and I just told you about that, there is a big major step to do. Uh, I have clean code to work with. It is well organized, and I've actually, um, I have actually reviewed that code recently, as in right now. Good. All right. Yes, less visual noise, less garbage. Yes, it is good. That's a good thing. Um, and this other script is uh, literally the battle script. Um, I'm not ready to be doing anything with that yet. Uh, this is already at that state. Uh, it's a good thing to review later. Sort of taking away the questions and the problems one by one these, these are now effectively notes. And I kind of want to get rid of them. I know why they're there. In fact, they're kind of notes for to help me uh, refactor later. Mm -hmm. Like this. This is telling me how I should probably do it when I refactor later. Mm -hmm. This is garbage. Yeah, that's straight up garbage. That was an old way of doing things. And this notes, these are, this is debug notes to help me see that the sorting order of speed worked.
lot of these notes are, I mean, a lot of these are debug lines uh, I was using while developing the battle systems. So this is actually a lot dirtier than the script I was just looking at, but uh, for a purpose. Like I'm, I'm literally, after this, I'm going to jump back into uh, the battle script and do my last big thing on it. So I do need this to be uh, all those debug lines. I, I might need to use them, so I'm going to keep them there. Okay, uh, this is good, actually. I know, it's a lot of lines of code. Believe me, that's not the largest script I've ever written. This is this is a small game. This <laughs> is a small and simple game. Okay, I'm good. Hey, you know what? You're good. You're excellent for watching these VODs and, and helping support this uh, Twitch channel and the Twitch channel and the and the YouTube video channel by viewing and liking and and just just being you. Good job, you. I'm gonna give you props. It is good. Hey, it, if you're watching the video, you are missing out because we have some really cool music. Um, we have jungle sounds usually, not right now, but usually. And um, I just, you know, I encourage you to stop by while the stream is actually in place. The stream is streaming on Twitch. But, you know, Follow, like, subscribe, retweet, whatever, whatever, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And until next time, be good, do well, have fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah.